Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to welcome each and every one of you to our historic Rutledge Chapel at our University of South Carolina to participate in one of our institution's most, most revered traditions, the investiture of a new chancellor. Today is particularly historic as Dr. Susan Elkins will become the first Chancellor of Palmetto College. I ask that everyone please remain standing as Jared Buniel, Student Government Association President from the University of South Carolina Sumter gives the invocation. Please bow your heads for the invocation. God of wisdom and power, love and sacrifice. We take this time at the start of our chancellor's investiture to ask for your blessing and guidance as we pause at this milestone in the history of Palmetto College. We gather here today as students, faculty, colleagues and friends to show our support and wish our best for her and for this wonderful new innovative effort that creates greater access to education for all South Carolinians. We give thanks for the family of Chancellor Elkins and we give thanks for her teachers and mentors along the way. And we give thanks for the many members of the USC family who have made Palmetto College a reality and especially for the students who are served by Palmetto College. I humbly come before you giving this thanks in the name of the one who changed my life, Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Would everyone please be seated? Thank you, Jared. I think he was also uh, hoping that the air conditioning would stay on for the uh, duration of today. Welcome again. It, as I said, it's appro appropriately uh, symbolic that we hold Dr. Elkins' investiture in this historic Rutledge Chapel. Uh, and, and this occasion represent Carol represents Carolina's ongoing success in blending the best of Carolina's past with its brilliant and innovative future. When South Carolina College opened its doors on January 10, 1805, this building was the college. In fact, it was the only building uh, at the college at this time, and it served as the student dormitory, the lecture hall, the library, the faculty dormitory, the science laboratory, and the chapel. Horses were parked outside. Its faculty and students, however, did not have access to computers, the World Wide Web, Wi-Fi, electronic tablets, Twitter, Instagram, iPhones, and online education. Today, more than two centuries later, our 14 campuses bustle with more than 47,000 about to be leaders. They're critical thinkers and they're becoming problem solvers. It's a safe bet to say that most, if not all of them, are very highly connected, electronically connected. And although our students no longer bring their horses to campus, we do have a championship equestrian team here in Columbia. <laughs> and today, with the advent of Palmetto College, students in every town, village, city, hamlet, across the Palmetto State, will have an even greater opportunity to earn a baccalaureate degree with the quality, with the quality of USC online. Palmetto College students can start at one of our humble in size but big in heart regional campuses found in Lancaster, Salkahatchee, Sumter, 
or union, and I welcome all of those campus leaders here today. But they can also enroll in Palmetto College from wherever they receive two years of college. They can still complete their baccalaureate degree through Palmetto College. Clearly, the investiture of Chancellor Susan Elkins marks a new and important era for our university and for the entire state. This ceremony, counted among the oldest traditions in all of academia, originated in English universities and was modeled after the highly dignified knighthood ceremony. Chancellor Elkin's 18-month-old grandson doesn't find that particularly interesting, I know. <laughs> but you'll see grandma in a moment. <laughs> the word investiture is from the Latin phrase, and it means to be dressed in robe. And in academia, this literally means that one will soon don the university's regalia and insignia. Attending this important event are, of course, our faculty, representatives of the staff, students, of course, the core of our mission they are, alumni, trustees, government officials, citizens of the state, and of course, family and friends of Chancellor Elkins. And so together today, we will witness something special, the placing of our symbolic mantles of authority on Dr. Susan Elkins. We warmly welcome Susan's husband, Tommy Elkins. Welcome, Tommy and her son, Dr. Andy Elkins, who just completed his medical residency and soon, and soon will move with his wife, Kelly, and 18-month-old Maddox Anderson Elkins, who's here, you already know that. <laughs> They'll be moving to the University of Louisville to work on his specialty degree in radiology. Welcome to the Elkins family. What could be more important and appropriate as well as we celebrate online educational technology than to also welcome Susan's mother, Mrs. Frances Anderson, and her father-in-law, Mr. Gene Elkins. Now, you don't see them here, but they're Skyping with us from Tennessee. You can see them if you look over at that monitor. Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and they're waving back. That's wonderful. I'd like to uh, recognize uh, the Honorable Eugene War, Chairman of the University's Board of Trustees, and also what a wonderful turnout of Board of Trustees members sitting in the first two rows, along with the Board Secretary, members of the Board of, of Visitors, of course. We're delighted to have with us uh, Senator John Corson, who's been a supporter of ours for so long. We're so honored that you're here with us today, Senator Corson and representing the Honorable Nikki Haley, her Deputy Chief of Staff, Mr. Christian Sora, and of course, our First Lady Patricia. Let's recognize all of these wonderful guests today. <laughs> Let me also thank the search committee, led by Provost Michael Amaritis, because they did an outstanding job in seeking who we were looking for, the very best person on the planet, if I may say, to guide Palmetto College. And today I also extend my thanks to all campus leaders who have worked closely with Chancellor Elkins. Clearly an effort of this magnitude brings together resources and talent from the entire university system. It's a family. The system of the University of South Carolina is a family. And of course, we are very grateful to the General Assembly and for the governor's support in providing recurring funding to Palmetto College. And we will continue to monitor and note and report our progress and possibly seek more assistance in the future. <laughs> we are fortunate that Dr. Elkins has spent her entire career focusing on student access and success. We were delight, delighted to find a chancellor who shares our vision of improving access to affordable, high-quality education, and she has a desperate desire to meet the needs of South Carolina's growing workforce. You know, of course, that Palmetto College comprises our four regional campuses. I've mentioned them, but it's okay for me to tell you again. They are in Lancaster, 
at Salkahatchee, which comprises, of course, both the Allendale and the Walterboro campus in Sumter and in Union, where we also have a Lawrence location. And, and as well, our online component offers baccalaureate courses from our comprehensive universities in Aiken, in Beaufort, and at Upstate, as well as from the university's only Carnegie One research campus right here, the University of South Carolina in Columbia. Every degree program that we have founded in Palmetto College represents a discipline that is consistent with the job demands and the people's needs of this state. These Palmetto College degrees today include business administration offered by the University of South Carolina Aikens School of Business, criminal justice and an RN registered nurse to BSN program from our University of South Carolina Upstate, a baccalaureate degree in elementary education in liberal studies and organizational leadership from USC Columbia and a baccalaureate degree in human services administration from USC Beaufort. I thank each of you who've had a hand in making Palmetto College already a success, or th although the best successes are still ahead of us. I'm delighted now that we will have greetings from members, important members of the university community, from faculty and students as designated in your program. Leading these greetings will be USC alumnus Mike Cowick, President and CEO of the Electric Cooperatives of South Carolina. Mike Cowick will be followed by Dr. Jolie Fontenot, Chair of Palmetto College Faculty Senate in Union. She will be followed by Dr. Chris Plyler, Executive Vice Chancellor of Palmetto College. So now, please help me in welcoming our very own Mike Cowick. Thank you. There are a couple of things we've never been short of in South Carolina, and they're ideas and imagination. They almost seem to spring up out of the pluff mud along the beach of South Carolina. They certainly come up out of the red clay of York County, where I'm from. And they spring up out of the granite outcroppings in Greenville County. What we've been challenged with for over three centuries is how do we educate those people that can take ideas and imagination and put them to work. Early in the state's history, wealthy South Carolinians would send their sons off to England and daughters for education at Oxford and Cambridge. At one time, there were more South Carolinians studying in England than any other colony in the United States. And they produced results. This chapel we sit in is named for two Rutledges, John and Edward. Both were from Charleston. Both studied law in London. One was elected president of South Carolina under the new state constitution in 1776. One represented South Carolina at the Constitutional Convention and signed the final United States Constitution. The other, Edward, was the single youngest signer of the Declaration of Independence. Again, this imagination, ideas, and inspiration, willing to work hard, dreams that came out again of almost the earth in South Carolina, but they had to go away to be educated. That wasn't fair. So colleges were formed. College of Charleston in 1770, University of South Carolina in 1801. I hate to mention it, but Clemson in 1889. And out of that came people like Willow Gray from Lawrence County, South Carolina, who not only had ideas and imagination, but she saw the basic unfairness that everybody was entitled to something better. And she put her mind to that. Finally, in the civil rights period, this mass exodus of African Americans who left this state, not only to get an education, but also to apply their ideas and imagination, inspiration in other states was a great deficit for the state. And only recently have institutions like the University of South Carolina, through their places like the Honors College, reversed that trend. That takes us to today. There are places that electric cooperatives serve in South Carolina that look more like third world countries. In fact, if you look at health care, the male life expectancy in the 12 counties that are persistent poverty counties, and we serve all of them, is similar to Libya, Morocco, or Honduras. 
if you take just those 12 counties. If you take those same 12 counties and look at it religiously, it's Iraq, Algeria, and Honduras. And that's just health care and illiteracy. People are stuck there. They have ill relatives. They don't have the money to come to a Columbia. They've got a job they can't leave. Palmetto College is their ability to pursue their imagination, their ideas, and their inspiration. And again, they spring out of that same pluff mud, that same red clay, and that same granite outcropping. And finally, we have fairness in South Carolina. It's a privilege to be with you today. Thank you. I'm going to be rude enough to time myself so I stay on time, if you all don't mind. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> but I really am timing myself. Thank you for having me. I took a philosophy course in ethics when I was a junior at the University of Dallas. And this was a brand new professor, Dr. Janet Smith. No one had ever had. And we had a final. I will never forget. A few multiple choice items, not so bad. Followed by an essay question, which was follows. A man steals oranges from his wealthy neighbor to feed his malnourished children. Define the ethicality of the act according to the systems of Kant, Mill, Nietzsche, and Aquinas, showing the differences between them, then define it by your own system. Be brief. <laughs> I can still recall the wave of confusion followed by the fervent muttered prayer to the good Lord or two. I have never been happier to earn a B minus in a class in my entire life. Although I think that was great inflation. <laughs> what you might ask, does this have to do with Chancellor Elkins? Plenty. I'd like to think of this story as also representing the mission she has to create Palmetto College. First, Chancellor Elkins was hired last February and given an ambitious agenda to be accomplished in a short amount of time. And my, what a remarkable job she's done. I have no doubt that if she were sitting behind, beside me in that classroom in 1989, she would have anticipated the question. She would have been prepared, put her pen to the paper, and would have been the first to turn in her paper and leave the room, an A paper. It isn't just her skill as an administrator that matters. Second, I've had the honor of working closely with Chancellor Elkins for the past year. She has brought a personal touch to her work that has touched many. In May of this year, at graduation for the Union students, she asked me to introduce her to some of the students and visitors. I didn't have much to do because she already knew our SGA of officers. In fact, she introduced me to many people, including Summer Yarbrough's cousin. Uh, Chancellor Elkins made her way through the crowd and talked to every student she could, and they were touched, and so was I. She didn't leave the area until nine o'clock that night, when after working all day in heels, she drove five hours to Tennessee to see her mother and made it back to Columbia on Monday. Dr. Elkins is a woman of tremendous energy and her personal interactions with those around her, particularly the students, is a joy to watch. The Regional Campus Faculty Senate looks forward to the challenges we face in making Palmetto College's future a bright one with her leadership, commitment to faculty governance, and zeal for her mission. I have every reason to believe that the future, challenges and all, will be a bright one. Thank you. On behalf of the Palmetto College administration and professional staff, I am pleased to welcome you, Dr. Elkins, to the University of South Carolina in one of its most visible components of statewide outreach, now known as Palmetto College. Throughout your 16 months here in Columbia, I trust that you have come to appreciate that the dedicated men and women who provide the instructional and student support to successfully achieve the teaching, research, and service mission of our Palmetto campuses are truly remarkable 
and among the finest in higher education. Many are here today. Now under your leadership, we are rallying to introduce Palmetto College to every South Carolinian wishing to begin or complete their bachelor's degree. Know that you can rely with confidence on our expertise and support to make student success and the vision for Palmetto College a reality. I congratulate you and offer best wishes to you in your role as our new chancellor. Thank you. Thanks to each of you for your thoughtful remarks. We will now hear from two of our Palmetto College students. First, Rosie Curiel, Student Government Associa Association President from USC Salkahatchee. Rosie. Hello, everyone. As Palmetto College students, we are thrilled to be at the University of South Carolina at this historic time. At USC Salkahatchee, as at other Palmetto campuses, we are proud to be receiving a USC quality education a little closer to home. It is exciting that the University of South Carolina is available to the whole state. We are proud to be a part of this exciting time at the university and so pleased to work alongside Chancellor Elkins to bring this into fruition. To realize that the university is not only the flagship campus in Columbia, but also a system that includes senior campuses in three different corners of the state, four other Palmetto campuses geographically dispersed, and now access online for not only every corner of our state, but every corner of our country, is to realize the commitment our university has to serve its students. I have enjoyed wonderful opportunities at USC Salkahatchee, both on local campus and in Columbia, such as meeting our very supportive USC Board of Trustees, working with Chancellor Elkins, and realizing what a wonderful president and first lady we have in the past TDs. And even in Washington, where I had the opportunity to travel along with other SGA leaders to tell the USC story to our Congressman and even Vice President Biden. Being a Palmetto College student is exciting and a wonderful opportunity. Even though I'm not on the Columbia campus, no student anywhere in the university system could feel more a part of the University of South Carolina than I do. The university has done that for me and I thank you. I cannot wait to see what even more exciting directions USC and Palmetto College will continue to take in the future. Well done, Rosie. And now, known to many in this room today as Captain Grabsky of our own campus law enforcement and safety division, I introduce Eric Grabsky Sr., who is now working toward a Bachelor of Liberal Studies degree through Palmetto College Online. Eric Grabsky. Thank you, Mr. President. I am so honored to have been given the opportunity to represent the students in Palmetto College Online at Chancellor Elkins Investiture today. I believe my experience as a student within this college at this great institution is an example similar to many non-traditional students who simply need the chance to bridge the gap between successful and demanding careers or important family obligations or other life priorities and the ability to complete a degree of the caliber found here at the University of South Carolina. The opportunity I have to engage in the online class experience allows me to fulfill those important life priorities yet progress toward my educational goals, which I plan on taking even further. I have the privilege of attending class uh, when my schedule and priorities allow. I get to brew, brew my own coffee and have it while I'm listening to lectures, and I never have a problem party, uh, finding a parking spot <laughs> to go to class, unless my wife parks in front of me. It's really been a privilege uh, the opportunity I have to engage in the online class experience allows me to fill all of those priorities. Um, 
And those priorities in that classroom experience often begins as the family goes to bed at night or before they wake up in the morning. Um, more importantly, I've found that my USC professors are extremely, extremely well adept in providing a challenging, motivating, and rewarding educational experience online. This is extremely important to me as it uh, speaks highly to the quality of education that the University of South Carolina provides. As a Palmetto College online student, I also have the opportunity to be taught by professors from throughout the USC system. This diversity and the wealth of knowledge that comes with it has added positively to my overall learning experience. Thank you all within our university uh, and our state government who have supported and worked hard uh, to promote Palmetto College and have, have made it a reality. This remarkable opportunity has and will continue to make quality education, higher education, more accessible to many students who would otherwise not have the opportunity to fill their educational goals. I also want to thank Chancellor Elkins for her tireless leadership and passion. Her zeal for Palmetto College and the opportunities it holds is truly contagious. The example she sets in her everyday dedication to making Palmetto College the solution for so many students who would otherwise not have access to the excellence and quality of education at the University of South Carolina is extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And although unintentional, Eric may have given us our next new marketing campaign, Palmetto College, the quality of USC online with free parking. <laughs> now that will sell. At this time, we'll have a short musical interlude taken from Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man, performed by our very own faculty brass quintet under the direction of Professor Emeritus Dick Goodwin. Absolutely beautiful and inspiring. Thank you. Dr. Michael Amaritas, who led the search committee for our new chancellor and who is provost and executive vice president for academic affairs in Columbia, will now present Dr. Elkins for the charge and presentation of the medallion. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman of the Board, Board of Trustees and Board of Visitors, members, dear colleagues and friends of the university. It is a great honor for me to be asked to present Dr. Elkins for the charge and presentation of the medallion. Many of you in the audience are familiar with the strong personal relationship that I have had over the last five years with the four regional campuses in our system. You have heard me before referring to them as beacons of hope in some cases the only beacon of hope in their underserved communities. And you know my respect for their faculty who deliver high quality university level education and make sure that no student under their care falls through the cracks of our sometimes complicated university system. You also know my ad admiration for the students who are determined to succeed under sometimes very adverse conditions, working, for example, the third shift at Walmart in Union while receiving the Dean's Scholarship. And this is a true story, by the way. 
together with Dr. Chris Plyler and with the support of President Pastidis, we worked diligently to create, to give birth to this new entity in our system. Palmetto College, that includes our regional campuses and an ambitious online four-year degree completion program. We set the foundation, we chose the name, and we advocated for its financial endowment from the state. And I want to thank today Senator Corson, our good friend of the University of South Carolina, and his colleagues in the General Assembly for their support, as well as Mr. Sura for the support that the Governor's Office has shown to Palmetto College. As you can imagine, it was very important for us, all of us, for myself, for Chris, for the President, not only professionally, but also personally again, to find the right person that would nurture this academic baby in its early steps and help it grow, help it reach its full potential. It was my great privilege to serve as the chair of the search committee, and I was delighted to recommend to the president, Dr. Susan Elkins, as the clear choice from a pool of highly qualified candidates. What separated Susan from the rest of the field was her very visible passion for providing higher education opportunities to those who most need them in underserved rural communities, but also the fact that she had done in Tennessee something very similar to what we were trying to do here in South Carolina. Dr. Elkins brings more than 35 years of valuable experience to her new role as our first Palmetto College Chancellor. She received a bachelor's and master's degree in education from Tennessee Technological University, Tennessee Tech, and completed her doctoral work in educational leadership with an emphasis in higher education administration at Vanderbilt University. Susan has honed her administration skills through her work as Vice President of Extended Programs and Regional Development, and also as Dean of the College of Interdisciplinary Studies at Tennessee Tech. In addition, what separated from many other candidates that we had was that she's very well versed in the importance of building relationship, building strategic partnerships, both internal and external, and has critical experience through her work with campus colleges, but also with external partners such as community colleges, technology centers, K through 12 school districts, as well as with business and industry. As a scholar, Dr. Elkin's publications and presentations have focused on these same issues that they are very, very fundamental to the success of Palmetto College and the USC system, leadership, continuing higher education and student success. Over the past 17 months, and it's hard to believe, Susan, that it's been 17 months. I thought you just came in last month. Over the past 17 months, Dr. Elkins has been a passionate and effective advocate for Palmetto College, skillfully articulating the new educational degree opportunities that are now available for rural and place-bound South Carolinians. Her tireless work with deans and chancellors throughout the USC system is making higher education in this state more accessible, more affordable, and more efficient. Under her guidance, Parmetto College is already providing the quality of the USC system online and expanding access to higher education, working to meet the needs of an increasingly complex economy in the state. Mr. President, I'm very proud to present the University of South Carolina Palmetto College's first chancellor, Dr. Susan Elkins. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Michael, to you, uh, the last 17 months seemed like one. To Susan, they've seemed like a lifetime. <laughs> At this time, I ask Chancellor Susan Elkins to come forward. She will be joined by USC Board of Trustees Chairman Eugene War, who will assist me with the presentation of the medallion.
Susan Elkins, the University of South Carolina's Board of Trustees, and I are charged by the General Assembly on behalf of all the people of South Carolina to oversee a most vital enterprise related to the quality of life in our state. The university has always pledged itself and always will to be, quote, a faithful index to the ambitions and fortunes of this state. To that end, I extend the charge of expanding access to all eligible South Carolinians to a higher education degree through Palmetto College. The task before you is to ensure that Palmetto College's promise to all eligible South Carolinians not be confined to the halls of academia, but be delivered in every city, town, and hamlet within the state. Let it be known that the quality of a USC baccalaureate degree is now available online, and that this university will lift the fortunes of this state by providing an even stronger and better educated workforce. It is now my privilege to bestow on you the emblems of office that symbolize the responsibilities which you have already borne admirably for 17 months. Will all please rise. Dr. Susan Elkins, by virtue of the authority vested in the Board of Trustees by the General Assembly acting on behalf of the people of South Carolina, I hereby do install you as the Chancellor of the University of South Carolina Palmetto College. I charge you to guide and grow this innovative institution of higher education. If you willingly accept the challenge, accept with it this medallion that designates you as the embodiment of the institution's power and authority. Congratulations, Chancellor Susan Elkin. President Pastides and Chairman Moore, it is with heartfelt passion and gratitude that I willingly accept this challenge and the charge to guide and grow this new innovative institution, the University of South Carolina Palmetto College. Thank you for the privilege of serving in this capacity as we provide greater access, affordability, and flexibility to South Carolinians seeking bachelor's degrees. Is the air conditioner still working? <laughs> or do all of you want to exit like my grandchild did a little earlier? <laughs> Moving on, and we will be brief. We know it is warm in here. But this is a day of thanks, and I must thank several people. First, members of the Board of Trustees, honorable government officials, faculty, staff, students, alumni, family, and friends. Thank you for being with us today as we celebrate this historic event in our university's history. This ceremony marks the conclusion of the first year of operation of Palmetto College, and we would not be here celebrating today without the dedicated service and contributions of all of you, all of you who are with us, as well as many others who could not be here. The launch of Palmetto College has truly been a system-wide team effort of the Pacers, Sand Sharks, Gamecocks, Spartans, Lancers, Indians, Fire Ants, and the Mighty Bantams. It's truly been a team effort. Everyone has worked together to create a win-win for the institutions and most importantly, for the students we all serve. So this is a time of celebration for all of us on Team USC 
and I welcome the chance to express my gratitude to all of you for your many contributions to the success of Palmetto College. First, President Pastides, to you and your leadership team, including each chancellor and campus dean, throughout the entire system, thank you. With this innovative approach that involves the entire USC system, Palmetto College is a national model of system innovation that combines the best of all worlds. On-ground campuses across the state with traditional faculty and students, and an online campus offering online bachelor's degrees with online faculty and students. It's wonderful to see all the elements of delivery seamlessly working together to provide greater access and success for all. Now on the front, front two rows, members of the Board of Trustees, thank you for your outstanding leadership in seeking innovative ways to provide greater access and success for students across the Palmetto State. Approving the promise of Palmetto College reflects a vision and determination to create a better educated workforce for South Carolina. Surely the quality of USC online will lift our state's fortunes county by county. Thank you. And to those in the former Division of Systems Affairs and Extended Universities who developed Palmetto programs, the forerunner to Palmetto College, thank you for laying such essential foundations for Palmetto College. I know that we are truly standing on the shoulders of giants today. To my colleagues who serve Palmetto College as members of the Chancellor's Executive Council, and to all team members in each unit and on every campus, your contributions during this time of organizational development have been invaluable. Senator Corson, representative from the, the governor's office, to all of our other government officials, we're grateful for your dedication and service to this state, and especially for your emphasis on economic development, workforce development, and improving educational levels that lead to greater economic opportunity for both the state and its citizens. Thank you. The legislative appropriation for Palmetto College is critical to its success. And on behalf of the state and our students, we're grateful, very grateful for that support. As Dr. Pastides has often said, this may be the most significant investment the General Assembly has made in modern times to assist our citizens as they complete four-year baccalaureate degrees in high demand professions. Now to the Palmetto College implementation team, those who have been doing lots of work throughout the past year, including the leadership team of Provost Amaritas, Vice President Ford, Vice President Plyler, Chancellors Jordan, Moore, and Upshaw, Deans Carmichael, Collins, Taylor Coburn, and Sontag, along with interim deans Emmanuel, Lowe, and Watts, as well as approximately 150 system-wide representatives. Over 150 people on this implementation team working month by month on all the details. You are today's true heroes. You are today's true heroes. We owe each of you a debt of gratitude for your leadership and your tireless work. To the faculty members who are with us today, as well as those who could not be with us, you're the very core of our mission. You've also worked tirelessly during this year of transition. I must first recognize the Palmetto College faculty from Lancaster, Sockahatchee, Sumter, Union, and Extended University, formerly known as the Regional Campus Faculty, and their faculty Senate organization, along with the executive committee of this body. Thank you for your work. I would also like to recognize faculty and program leaders from Aiken, Beaufort, Upstate, and Columbia, who developed and taught the seven inaugural bachelor's degree completion programs. Thank you for your willingness to step outside the traditional classroom and into the virtual classroom. To both faculty groups, you are the true pioneers of Palmetto College. Now, of course, I've saved the best for last, our Palmetto College students, because you are why we do what we do every day. Clearly, Rosie and Eric exemplify the successful outcomes that are available to all South Carolinians, both on campus and online, as a result of the new Palmetto College initiative. So Rosie and Eric, please accept my thanks for speaking so eloquently today. And we also have some very brilliant students with us who represent Palmetto College students system-wide, 
And will all of the students who are with us please stand and be recognized. And I will tell you, most of you may not be able to see them because they've made their way to the, back of the balcony for the most part. Students, stand up and be recognized. We realize you're spending a day of your summer vacation with us, so thank you for taking time to do that. Now, on, moving quickly through, on a brief personal note, a huge thanks to my family for being with me today and always. To my husband, Tommy, our son, Andy, his beautiful family, wife, Kelly, and our grandson, Maddox, who is probably outside in the 90 degree weather. <laughs> to my mother and my father-in-law, who in the spirit of the day are joining us online through Skype, as President Pastides mentioned earlier. Of course they know how to Skype and FaceTime, because like many of you, they have grandchildren in other parts of the world. So thank you for being here. To my late father and my late mother-in-law, who I'm certain are looking down upon us today with a smile. And to the many other family members, friends, teachers, colleagues, and mentors who have encouraged and inspired me throughout the years, and who may also be joining us online. Please know that each and every one of you is very special to me and important in your own way. Thank you. Let me take just a minute to reiterate what President Pastidi said in his opening remarks. If you'll remember, he said, this building, Rutledge Chapel, this building was the college in the early 1800s. It was the only building and it served as the dormitory, lecture hall, chapel, library, and science laboratory. Now today, more than 200 years later, that laptop is also the college. This iPad is also the college. And this iPhone is also the college. Things are a little bit different than they were for most of us. And today, those who are place bound in South Carolina don't need a horse, thank goodness, no horses outside. They don't even need a moped or even a car. They just need an internet connection or a Wi-Fi hotspot to access high quality education from our very own USC. It's right there at their fingertips, anytime, any place, helping them juggle many of life's activities. Now, but regardless of the setting, whether on campus or by mobile device, we all know that the key to student success is in that human connection. That human connection. That human connection that's here today as I'm seeing my mom and waving at her, although she's 350 miles away. So whether we're in a brick and mortar building or in a class, classroom through FaceTime, Skype, an online course, it's that human connection that really matters. And those human connections allow us to build foundations from which to build brighter futures. Now this reminds me of one of my favorite old mountain sayings that goes something like this. If you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. Now think about that again. If you see a turtle on a fence post, get that in your mind, tall fence post, little turtle on the top, you know it didn't get there by itself. So let's take just a minute to stop and reflect on those who helped each of us, each of us, get to the top of the fence post we're on today. Who helped you? Who helped you? Each of you, who helped you get on top of the fence post? I hope everybody in the audience has had someone special come to mind. Because let us conclude this afternoon by honoring those who have helped us by paying that debt of gratitude forward. Let's think about those who helped us pay that debt of gratitude forward because what I want you to do at this point in time is take another minute to think about who will you mentor? Who will you encourage? And who will you help get to the top of a fence post? So who will you help? And yes, of course, you can do it through this wonderful new opportunity called Palmetto College. Thank you for your attendance today. 
and for your many contributions to the successful launch of Palmetto College. Together, as we continue to build and strengthen our USC Palmetto College, we will change lives throughout this great state and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Elkins. I, I, I would sum up your presence this way. Only a very uncommon person would have chosen fanfare for the common man and let me add woman. And that is the kind of person that uh, Chancellor Elkins is. Your remarks assure me and assure each and every one of us that our future is bright having you as our leader. You didn't mention it, but there's another truth about Palmetto College online students relative to the 5,000 freshmen that will be arriving here in Columbia, Susan, they're a lot quieter as well. <laughs> as you said, uh, everybody uh, needs help in reaching where they reach. Two other members of the audience today I'd like to recognize, and you'll help me thank them, uh, people who've helped guide our Board of Trustees and, and me as President, Chairman Emeritus Herbert Adams and former trustee John Fields. Would they please stand and be recognized, please? I'd like to now thank our student ushers who represent our regional Palmetto uh, College campuses. Janelle Buniel from USC Sumter, Bryce Mobley from USC Salkahatchee, Brandon Newton, USC Lancaster, and Candace Owens, USC Union. Satin McIntosh, an associate degree holder from USC Salkahatchee, will now lead us in singing the first verse of our alma mater. After that, we will have the recessional of the platform party and the faculty. I hope then that many of you and maybe all of you can join Susan and her family and Max, say hello to Max, for a reception at the Caroliniana Library. Thank you for being part of this historic and celebratory occasion. Will everyone now please stand?